Yeah. Okay. okay. Hopefully Hello, food. everybody. We are. Whoops! I just dropped this. Um... Oh. Uh, wait, two more minutes. One more minute. And then we're done. Here. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here with us for this third or this fourth. Um, Men's Club Presents. We've been doing this now for uh, three and a half weeks. We've had, uh, we had Jamil Smith last week, Erica. We yep. had uh, my father. My father was on. Uh, the mayor. The mayor himself, giving his <laughs> views of what's happening in the world. Um, and, uh, and then uh, and we had on a, a doctor who spoke about uh, ways to stay healthy during all of this. And uh, I'm just thinking about all the interesting people that I'm connected to. I invited Carter Bays. I invited oh, cool. uh, David Wayne. <laughs> All oh, these really? interesting Clevelanders who have some kind of connection to me, um, I thought would get uh, a chance to introduce them to the congregation. Um, I'm gonna ask everybody to make sure, please, that you are muted. Oh. I think everybody's okay. muted. Let me just mute everybody. I'm gonna mute everybody and unmute you guys. Good. You're there, right? We're here. We're here. Okay. So welcome, everybody. It's such a thrill uh, to have Erica and Geraldo with us. Um, I just want to give you a, a sort of a, a brief synopsis of why uh, we're together. Uh, Erica Levy, uh, Erica, Erica Rivera, but I know her as Erica <laughs> Levy, um, is somebody I've known my entire life. Uh, her family is near and dear to my family. Um, and uh, it's been, uh, she, how long have you guys been married now? 20 years almost. 19. Years. Together 20. Yeah. yeah. So so 20, 20 this summer. 17. 17. Years. Right. So over the last 20 years since uh, Geraldo has entered Erica's life, I'd, I've had a chance to get to know him. He's had a chance to get to know my family. Uh, Geraldo and Erica now live in Cleveland, right around the corner from my family. And um, it's just such a thrill to have you guys here. So thank you so much. Thank you. A well, rabbi Lycan did. Geraldo's mom's funeral gave the eulogy, which was so beautiful. And it made me, uh, it led me to the decision that you'll do mine when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> Long time away. That's, a, that's an endorsement. That's a real yeah, endorsement. Yeah, I love that. And, and we would course. deeply touch when you did that, that for, for our mom, course. who really was nice. uh, almost 99, uh, Lily Friedman Rivera. You know, yep. she uh, broke all the barriers when she married my dad, Cruz Rivera. You know, one of 17 children from Bayamon, Puerto Rico, so. Uh, and wasn't it Mother's Day? It was, it was Father's Day. It was it Father's was a, Day. And, and it, was, it was a real celebration of, of her life. It was, it was really an, just an amazing, really touching opportunity for me. So I was so honored to be there and, uh, and to be with you guys. Thank you. And your um, dad was my dad's law that's professor. Right. In his yes, first year. yes. So yes. our parents go way back, and our moms our parents go there. Our best together. Friends. They talk best preschool friends. together. Yeah, I think That's they're both on right now. Every New Year's together. And yes. your dad New was, was our mayor for many years. I was. I was the mayor shaker, right? <laughs> right. And you, I think you had lunch with him recently, right? I did. Yeah, so, we were in the. Yes. We had uh, the the yeah. deli, the Jewish deli. Jewish deli. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. And if so, um, Nancy Levy is watching right now, and <laughs> Ellen yes, Lincoln. you know they are. <laughs> they're eating this up. This is their excitement for the month. <laughs> so um, it's a thrill to have you guys with us. Um, we, uh, I, I wanted to talk tonight a little bit about, first of all, how are you guys doing? How are you doing? You're uh, at home. Tell me about just how you're doing personally at home. You first, honey. Well, we feel so, we lived in Bergen County and in New York City for the past well, Geraldo his whole life, he's a born and bred New Yorker, but for me, 25 years. And then we moved to, to Cleveland. Three, I grew up in Cleveland. We moved back to Cleveland three years ago. And so we're in our suburban bubble here in Shaker Heights. And we have our daughter, the youngest of five. Uh, her siblings are much older than her and, and grown up and working. But our daughter is 14, so she's pretty self-sufficient. She's independent. We're, we feel very lucky to be in Cleveland. We live near 
three great hospitals. The Cleveland Clinic is amazing. 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 And we are so grateful. I feel tortured and conflicted, Rabbi. When I think about it, I could cry right now and I think about how our city, my old hometown, the place where I was born has suffered. Uh, yeah. You know, we lived in a beautiful building on 89th Street and now four or five of the residents are positive for COVID-19 and our friends, the doctors are working, you know, around the clock in this awful yeah. epidemic. It's just- Our friends a, haven't left their, their apartments in a month. They're just staying, right, 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 right. The streets of uh, New York City are empty. Plague is just, yeah. It is just, it is biblical scale. It's, it's yeah, awful. yeah, yeah. And you think a little bit about the tragedies and the, the, the crises that New York has faced. And even 9-11, it had its period of time, but you know, eventually people could, could get back outside and could congregate and be together. And, and here, New York is just, it's absolutely empty and this sense that we don't know when it's going to end. It's, uh, the, it's the, 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 the fragile nature of yeah. urban life when you see it exposed this way, where right. systems are challenged and you worry yeah. that they'll hold, that the, you know, the thin blue line will hold, that the, uh, you know, what knits us together as a civilization will hold together. You know, you worry about the center holding. They always talk about that. And, you know, I, I'm so, when you see the, the body count mounting and, and how stressed out everybody is in these hospitals and in the federal, uh, you know, the uh, Javits Center now, and now the Comfort, the Naval Vessel there, uh, you're proud of the country that it rallies to the people who are stricken and most needy. And on the other hand, you worry that there's not going to be enough care and, uh, you know, uh, and enough doctors, enough nurses, enough medicine, enough ventilators, and, and on and on. We just yeah. worry that uh, this horrible storm uh, is the going unknown. to get the us. The unknown is, is so yeah. scary. Yeah. It is. And it is. Yeah. Yeah. The and people, yeah anticipatory grief that I think we're all feeling. Yeah, yeah. Not knowing right. how the world has changed, how will it change? What yeah, will our lives yeah. be like? Will it end after the first wave? Will there be a second wave of this? Right. Will it take years or will it take a few months? We don't, right. we don't know. And, and, and that is, that's kind of the direction I, what I've been talking about with, with my congregation has been just the massive changes that we're going to see in our social, cultural, economic, you know, um, fabric from this. And I was talking with somebody who after uh, Hurricane Sandy um, uh, said that it took, it, it took a year and a half just to try and figure out how to, how to deal with it, right? And, and the effects of it. Here, what is, what is this going to do to just who we are, right? Well, you know, in, in, First of all, just you said Hurricane Sandy, and I thought about uh, wasn't it your mom Nancy Levy with us for Hurricane Sandy? Yes. And we we rented a hotel room. We in, were at the Double Tree in Manhattan in Times Square. Yes. <laughs> oh, during we it, weathered, really? We weathered Hurricane Sandy. We had the Sandy. chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. There. <laughs> you know, I, I what what this is, Rabbi? What what deeply troubles me, aside from the loss of life, which obviously is the most paramount issue. This has exposed the ideological rift in this country, the divide between left and right, Republicans and Democrats, blue and red, in a way that is almost obscene in its, uh, in its profundity. Uh, you know, how can, uh, you know, it's like a nation divided. It's almost like uh, the country in, uh, in, in 1860, 1861, about to engage in a civil war. I hate it. I hate the commentary. I hate the fact that uh, you know, every encounter with uh, whether it's President Trump or whomsoever is is uh, is wrapped in a partisan, uh, uh, you know, coding. It's uh, it's terrible to me that I, the most, uh, uh, you, you know, important substantive issues are all couched, even like uh, take hydroxychloroquine, right. uh, this uh, drug that the president has been touting. I fear that there are people that are opposed to the president rooting for this drug to fail because he's promoting the Because drug. he's promoting it, right, oh, right, 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 right. Why don't we pull together? Isn't this exactly the time? You mentioned 9-11. After 9-11, yep. everybody was united. The country stood together shoulder to shoulder. Even though George yeah. Bush was the president, uh, the Democrats were with him. 
Uh, you know, right. everybody was very much. The yeah. senators stood together. The Congress. I haven't heard anyone saying that they don't want the drug to work. I think they're just saying that they would rather hear from the scientists or the doctors say that the drug is working and not hear that it's just. Well, yeah. That it could work. That I, I certainly think that we have people who 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 discount whoever's speaking from the other side as soon as they speak, right? Whether it's the president or whether it's the, it's Governor Cuomo or whether who whoever it is, and and I just what's different today than 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 the world of nine eleven? Why why don't we have that ability to overcome this now? I you know that's a great question, Rabbi, and I wish I could give you a, a glib you know answer. But what happened to the country is I I think partially it was social media. Cable news, if you remember 9-11, cable news was almost brand new. Fox had just started in 1996, you know, so it was relatively new, everything. Uh, but, you know, now you've got a situation where social media can polarize people and, and fragment society and divide us against each other in a way that's instantaneous. Like, right. there can be people watching right now, they could be, you know, into their followers and, and a half hour from now, reaching tens of thousands of people around the globe. Uh, you know, it's just right. the, the ability, it is our blessing and our curse, the fact that we can, you know, instantly, uh, you know, politicize or dramatize or, or misconstrue or support any issue we want. Right, right, right. I also think there is a, we're really bad at, at being wrong. Right, right. People, people cannot. Not me. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> Unless we have a good wife right next to us, or a husband right next to us, who's arguing the other. Yeah, we're really bad at admitting that we are wrong, and um, and and people are. And I find this in conversations that we have with, at the synagogue that people are so dedicated to their position that they are unwilling to see any other on the other side. Right. Not me, I'm flexible. <laughs> Except you, you're flexible, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> what do you think about that, Eric? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a, it's well, a funny yeah. thing about, I think that being a liberal is easier than being a moderate and way easier than being a conservative, I think. You, you, because liberalism is humanism, it's compassion, it's inclusion. It's a generosity. It's, uh, it's being you know, open-minded to different ideas and viewpoints. Unless they're not liberal. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I believe that the fragmentation in the country and this yeah. right-left thing is going to be what holds America back from its true greatness. But I, I think I, the I, reason why it's so, why it's happening right now is, is unfortunately because of, of a lot of, the, what the president is doing, attacking the That's press. right, right. And Robert, you know the president. So yeah. where, where, do you, where, where do you stand on his leadership during this? Well, you know, it's, <laughs> Rabbi, you asked the question. Uh, <laughs> I've known Donald Trump since 1976. Wow. You know, so my, I've known, I've interviewed him 35 times. Right. We have hung out together. We've gone to fights together, you know, all the rest of it. I've seen right. him go through all. I was the, on the final season of Celebrity Apprentice. I know, I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I remember. So uh, just before he declared for the, uh, for the presidency. For the presidency. So yeah. I, I obviously see him in a different light than I would uh, even his predecessor, this, the sainted, uh, you know, Barack Obama. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, when someone that you know, I've never had that experience before. When someone that you know and you hang out with is now the commander in chief of the United States of America, the leader of the free world and all the rest right. of it, you know, it is almost inevitable that I give him the benefit of the doubt. Right. Uh, you know, Erica doesn't have that same shared experience. You right. know, she wouldn't even go to dinner with him when we were invited in Mar-a-Lago. She refused to go with me. Uh, right. You know, she's very, she feels very strongly that, you know, his policies are in many ways antithetical to what I believe. I believe in choice. I believe in uh, immigrant, uh, immigration reform. Right. Uh, right. I, I believe in, uh, in gay marriage and, you know, I'm, right. I'm basically a very progressive person, except for some fiscal issues that right. allow me to be, uh, to call myself a moderate. I call my, my podcast Roadkill because the only thing in the middle of the road 
uh, is a, is a, you know when you're a middle of the roader, it's roadkill. It's row you get done. Because of how he stands on the big issues, that's why we're able to be married. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, listen, you're the perfect example of a, of how to deal with this challenge, right? Yeah, right? It, is, it is difficult it is though, and, and I yeah. I see. You know, we are a microcosm in many ways, but we we are civil about it, and right. you know, we allow the other person to make their point. Right. Right. This is the debate that goes on at dinner tables all across America. Of this course. is the debate that uh, has riven the country. But uh, what's different with us is that we're gracious enough that we hear the other person out and her right. beliefs about a particular issue or, or even about President Trump right. doesn't poison my love for her. Uh, right, know, and right. Her, and, we, and that's the we, we just the, the, the person we just lost in our congregation was a guy who uh, on political issues, I couldn't be more diametrically opposed to everything he sort of stood for. Um, but at the end of an argument, I would look at him and I would say, you know, Vlad, I love you. And he would look back at me and say, I love you too, Rabbi. And I was just thinking to myself, that is so rare. That is so rare. To, but to still have the ability to be so passionate about what your convictions are, what your core beliefs are, right? Um, because if, if somebody's going to deny that my right to do that, that's when I have a problem. Well, That's you know, right. we do this daily radio show here in Cleveland and the national podcast, and she is developing a voice that is very strong. She has her own following. Uh, you, many of the grumpy old men who listen to AM radio just can't. We're getting a few more women callers every Good day. Good for you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to break yeah, the mold yeah. in the radio No one radio from Shaker talk. Heights has called in. I'm waiting <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Ellen and Nancy. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Ellen and that's Nancy, right. be alert. Yeah. <laughs> They're listening. Can I tell you, I have gotten so oh, many pictures know. from my mother. My mother sends me like five pictures every day of her and my father with masks on. It looks, they look like Zorro. <laughs> they look like we had Zorro. the masks today. I went bicycle yeah. riding with my bandana and the girls went for a walk, Eric. And yeah, yeah, yeah man. that's great. Um, but, you know, this is a scary time. This is very, is scary this, time. when you very think scary. about it, when you, you mentioned 9-11, 9-11 was a horrible trauma for the country. And then it was a particular trauma for New York City. It, it, it's so angered me that I quit my job, my high paying job at NBC, and I went to become a war correspondent for Fox News, and that's how I got to Fox News. 9-11 made me a Fox News uh, correspondent. But the thing about 9-11 was, if you didn't live downtown Manhattan, over time, over weeks and months, if you're living uptown or in Queens or Brooklyn or Bergen County or Rockland County, over time, 9-11 faded unless you were exactly. there and you couldn't get into your house in Battery Park City or, you know, this is different. This is exactly. in every neighborhood, in every corner. Can you believe in Shaker Heights, we're going- It does not discriminate. Going, it does not yep. discriminate. And, we're, and we're, dry, we're riding my bicycle or she's walking around and wearing masks in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Like, this, is, it's uh, insane. this is bizarre. It's bizarre. This is, this right. is something right. that the children will remember for their entire lives. Yeah. And, and yeah. Generationally, yeah. this will be a reference. Of course, it will. And, and I mean, we're doing bar and bar mitzvah ceremonies. We're going to start over Zoom as well. So these kids who are going to, you know, remember growing up and they're going to say, I, I, I couldn't even be with my family and friends for my bar and bar mitzvah, much less funerals, right? So, so it's, yeah, yeah so it's, a, it's a different. Are, just imagine the people getting married. If you're, it's heartbreaking. Your yeah. grandma dies. What are, you know, it's awful. Yeah. So, grieving, just the whole process of grief and how it's changed because of this. And just worrying. Um, the idea of, of dying alone is the scariest oh, thought. Horrible. Yeah, Imagine yeah, alone. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing a lot of that. Not yet. Yeah. Not well, yet. Come to Rockland County. <laughs> what do we do when they start to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll We're find a way. Very forward on that. Very forward. Um, all right. I promised that I would have a few people ask a few questions. So I'm going to ask if you have a questions. Um, uh, please send them to me, 845-729-9021. Um, I do want to read uh, a few. Um, here's, this is a great question, and I think we've spoken about it already a little bit. In the 70s and 80s, when we grew up, he's speaking about Erica and, and, and my, this is a friend of mine, uh, there was very little difference as to whom you listened to or what network, Peter Jennings, Tom Brokaw, Dan Rather, Ted Koppel, Chris Wallace. Uh, all different networks, but the reporting of the news seemed to be balanced and fair. Now it appears we're so divided that the news is reported from totally different realities. Do you see any way of bridging this divide? 
Well, you know, Rabbi, in the in the roaring 1880s, and in the uh, you know the press in the 1776, they'd have stories that uh, this one is a pedophile, this one is a you know a communist, this one is this. You know, the press was wildly partisan. But what happened in the in the from Edward R. Morrow on in World War II on was a gradual uh, kind of a the news moved more to the objective, more to the professional, more to the fair and balanced. May I, if I could use that expression, right. a point of view where the conveying of facts from point A to point B became the mission, uh, informing right. people, and uh, commentary and opinion was separated from editorial in a very uh, you know uh, obvious way. What has happened with the growth I mentioned earlier, social media and, and cable news, is that it's given people a way that they can watch an outlet that speaks right to their prejudice, to their partisan nature, to their point of view. Now they could find a place, ah, that's a, that's a station where I don't get angry. I don't yell at the camera. They're speaking uh, at the television set. They're speaking right to me. And that, yeah, and that has led to great commercial success for the cable news networks that go right or go left. You know, now they have an audience that's guaranteed locked in. Uh, so many people are making money off of exactly. right. It's a money maker, right? Yeah, absolutely. Media that Trump has every yeah. time he's provocative, it just both right. sides. Both sides, yeah, both sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, I, I consider my congregants know this, myself a liberal. But I did watch on MSNBC, they had one night when, uh, when there was going to be ta uh, Trump's tax returns were coming out. And, <laughs> and, 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 and Rachel, Rachel Maddow, <laughs> yeah, she, had an, every, she kept saying, and we'll see it right after this commercial break, right? And I said, what do you mean a commercial break? <laughs> this is the biggest breaking news. I don't want to watch a commercial, <laughs> right? And, but it that's was, it. It was smart it, it, programming. She, was, she got yeah. a lot of people to watch. She did. Kind of a lame, uh, it was like Al Capone's vault. It was kind of a yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, <laughs> anticlimactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, here's, here's one. Who do you think, Geraldo, are the great investigative reporters of today? Of today? Oh, my goodness. Golly, I don't know who is even doing it anymore. Now it's all about, uh, you know, if you, I just watched the, uh, the Trump presser, uh, just yeah. today, the daily briefing which as Erica indicated was the highest rated show on, on TV now. Every single question is a gotcha question. Every single question is, is it not a fact that the 10 ventilators you delivered to Dallas, nine of them the, didn't plug in? Or isn't it a fact that, uh, you know, the drug you're touting, uh, you know, uh, hasn't been accurately or fully right, tested? Right. You know, everything is zingy, zingy, zingy. Yeah, yeah. But there's no, there's, in the old days, with you know, from Mike Wallace to me and, and to Brian Ross of, uh, of ABC, there was like, we would jump out of the bushes to surprise the bad guy. And <laughs> right, uh, right. cartoons in New Yorker that, uh, you know, uh, you can tell when you have a bad day when uh, your secretary says, Geraldo Rivera is here, or Mike Wallace right. is here, or Brian Ross is here. You know, you don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't think you can name, I may be wrong, at the national level, I don't know anyone who's doing it now, because why? Because number one, I, I, I think that the partisan thing affects everything. Also, investigative reporting is very expensive. You know, you've got to pay for a team to just, you know, to investigate until they're ready to present a story that, that bring it to fruition. And, you know, I watch, and with all due respect, all of them, like 48 hours and dateline. 60 minutes, pretty good. 60, 60 minutes, minutes. minutes. But the, yeah. when you, the big, the other magazine, news magazine shows, yeah. they're all about, this was the mass murder that happened in Pittsburgh in 1983. And, and he is the, yeah. I, and the, he is the mm -hmm. perpetrator. Right. In jail. You know, it's not investigating. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's true crime. Uh, you right. know, it's, it's more, you know, tabloidy. It reaches passions. It reaches emotions. It's all to, to get us excited and, and, uh, and, and you know, frantic. Um, there was a book I read a couple, bunch of years ago called The Shallows, 
And the argument that the book made was that these days, everything we do is just sort of going surface. And we get, you know, we never go deep. And if you think about the great inventors and the great artists and the great, you know, um, musicians, they were all people who took their time and went deep. But today, everything is Wikipedia and cable news and try, you know, um, we don't go deep with anything. Nobody reads books. They just read articles. Well, I hope the kids or salvage Twitter. the business. Yeah, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Not big on Twitter. I do too. Yeah, I do too. I hope the kids salvage, um, salvage the business. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay. Oh, uh, oh. Here's so. So I, I promised I would just do a half hour with you, but I want to give you one important question. What are you binge watching? What are we not binge watching? <laughs> <That's> Homeland. <right>. Yeah, <laughs> so much. Right. Last World's Best awesome. The Outsider was great. Every science fiction series I can. Every find. space movie <laughs> yep, on Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. The girls Ozark. Ozark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the plot against America. Oh, there you have you seen that? Yeah, I read the book. Unorthodox yeah. is so good. Terrific, terrific. We're gonna have terrific. a discussion. I want more online. But we yes, don't want yes, to your team. No. Oh my God! The most depressing show ever, right? Yeah. There's not one redeeming character in the entire show. <laughs> it's just—it's a sad tale about the state of the world. And, and now <laughs> the tigers are getting back at us because that tiger in the Bronx Zoo tested positive for COVID. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. It's God's revenge. God's revenge. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been such a thrill. Thank you so so much for just you, Rabbi, thirty you minutes. Man. Love you too. Hope everybody yeah. stays safe. Yeah, stay, stay safe. We will. Stay we, safe. Will. we will. We will. Happy Pesach. Uh, and Aziz and happy Pesach to you guys and to my whole community. We'll keep doing this. You know, I think one of the things we're trying to do as a community is just give people opportunities to come together, uh, right. whether it's listening to you guys or just um, just being together in other ways. So, thank you. Really. All right. For us. Yeah. So yeah, I would say say goodbye, hello to my parents, but I'll see them more than you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck inside. That's All right. right. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Signing off. Bye, everybody.